I really don't know if I have the energy to speak to you guys. But all I want to say is, is Kawarama Kosodo Somaliland. Such a beautiful country filled with beautiful people. I mean, coming in here makes me feel like generosity actually exists in humans because it takes a human to be generous to another human, right? I've been here for eight days and people in here have shown me nothing but pure love, man. Love actually exists in Somaliland. If I should give a slogan for this country, I would say it's a country of love. I mean, if you go to Berbera, they will tell you that Berbera is the city of love, right? But I would say the entire country is a city of love filled with generous people. I mean, I just want to add this testimony to it because where I am right now is called White Horse Hotel. And it was given to me out of generosity. Literally, I'm not paying for anything. They, they found out that, hey, Watamaya is in the country. And they were like, yo, if you are here, you just have to stay here, whether you like it or not. I'm like, wow. So I also want to say this and pay back. I want to say thank you so much for giving me such a beautiful welcome to your beautiful country. So if you ever get a chance to visit Somaliland, the best place for you to stay is White Horse Hotel. Don't thank me now. I mean, thank me later. You know, it's a month of Ramadan, the month of love, the month that is more special to our Muslim brothers and sisters. And when I got to Somaliland, it was actually a day before Ramadan. And I'm that guy who travels to embrace different culture, different religion, different way of doing things in every country that I go to. I just don't go to a country 48 hours and I leave. I always want to experience the country, spend my money in the country. I mean, get a chance to get to know the people before I'll be able to come out with one single video. So I've been here for like eight days. So I know what I'm saying. I've been to almost every corner of Somaliland. And when I go here, they told me that, hey, Maya, I think you came at the perfect time. I'm like, which one is the perfect time? They said, tomorrow is Ramadan. And I'm like, you know what? If tomorrow is Ramadan, I definitely want to practice Ramadan for the first time because I, I learned Ramadan in school, but I never knew that a day will come, I'll actually get the chance to practice Ramadan. So all I did a day before Ramadan was to go try Las Gale. Is it Las Gale? No, if you come to... Um, <laughs> This country, they got, uh, what do you call it, camel meat. So I'm like, you know what, please, can I try camel meat before Ramadan? Because I really want to fast. And it's been seven good days. And I never regret participating in this Ramadan. Ramadan is the most important month of the year for us. For Muslims all over the world, it's a month where we get to regain, strengthen our consciousness with Allah, unlearn all bad habits, and most importantly, put yourself in someone else's shoes of less fortunate. Feel self-discipline within your body while fasting. And you could think of it like a 30-day retreat with Allah. Ramadan is actually one of the five pillars of Islam. You see the flag behind me? That is a beautiful flag of Somaliland. I mean, waving higher. And you see the Arabic signs in it? That is actually one of the world, the five pillars of Islam. And what you see right there is the Shahada. I mean, every Muslim knows this. If you don't know this, maybe you can Google it. And Ramadan is the most important one. And don't forget that Ramadan is actually the ninth month of the Islamic calendar. I didn't know this. I didn't even know that Ramadan is actually a month. It's actually a holy month. It's actually a month that Allah revealed the first chapter of the Quran to Prophet Muhammad. So, I mean, this month, every Muslim in this world don't eat or drink water from dawn to sunset. So during sunrise to sunset. I mean, I feel like it's a moment to connect with your spirit because I have experienced this myself and I feel so connected and Believe me, I wanted to do this for just a few days, but I think I'll go for 30 days. And she has been so helpful. I feel like without her, I wouldn't have been able to complete my seven days fasting, you know, because we need to wake up early morning to eat. So what she normally comes, knocks our door. 
around four. Four forty-five. Today, today actually, it came late. She she was actually yeah. there. I four, slept in. Four fifteen. <laughs> she came. She brought some foodstuffs. We ate together, and then yeah, I went back to sleep. And Did you hear that first call of prayer? Were you awake? Because I've been here for like how many days now? Yeah, <laughs> six <laughs> days. So literally used to it. That actually woke me up. So it was around four ten. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. I woke up and I'm like, why is she not coming? <laughs> I had to. Is she still sleeping? Are you praying? Yeah, so the first call of prayer that you hear, it's the mm -hmm. alarm clock for the entire country. But it's literally telling everyone, wake up, it's time to eat, wake up, it's time to eat. And then the second call of prayer, which you're going to hear in about 20 minutes, that means, okay, final call, get ready, final call, get ready. Oh, okay. And then the last one means prayer. Close fast, no more food after that point. But I don't think I will eat after this one. <laughs> I'm really not used to like eating. At this hour? Very, very nearly like this, but. Yeah. Yeah, but when you go to Rome, you do what Rome has to. So, yeah, go get. There you go. Go get. Just drink up, like hydrate. Regardless what you do, there, you hit 10 30 a.m. And hunger starts. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you eat a buffet at this hour or yeah, you eat but, I, but um, one of the things that I do that I normally don't feel hungry is to just like forget about the food at all. Okay, yeah. Nothing, just stay. I mean, with water, it's good. You know, but this time you're gonna go without water. No water this time, yeah. <laughs> there. You can hear it. So this call of prayer is what? The second one. The second one. Mm. That you need to keep on eating or? Uh, yeah, like this is the last chance to eat. Last chance to eat. Yeah, but I think it's, it's my last stop of eating. <laughs> Can I sleep a little bit? Because I'm too sleepy. Okay, yeah. <laughs> let's, come, let's come back together at like 7 because we still have a lot of work to do. Yeah, so. So I got three hours to go. Three hours. Sure. Three two. Wow. One thing that I really learned from them is that they actually practice Ramadan for you to understand that there are people out there who actually don't get food to eat during that time. So put yourself in their shoes. So literally, Ramadan is also a month of what? Giving. Absolutely. Right. So when she told me that, I'm like, you know what? I cannot just fast without giving, right? I mean, like, as part of Ramadan, I know that Ramadan is the time of giving, um, and that is why I really want to do this before I get out of um, Somaliland. I would love to buy a goat and also cook for the less privileged. I mean, your mom is around, so definitely I'm gonna. I want to purchase a goat and give it to your mom oh, for your mom. To, yeah. I, I mean, you think it's okay, right? But where are we now? We are, you're at the right place definitely. We're at the goat uh, livestock market. Wow. So they have goat, cow, and camel for sale here. I've never seen anything like this before, man. But I think the people in here are friendly. They're all calling me African, African. Yeah, I'm from Africa, man. Hi. Yeah, uh, from Ghana. You know Ghana? Yeah. You see, like, it's kind of like interesting how people here want to know where you're from. Is it because you look different? I need to tell my hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I mean, how, how much does a goat cost in here? Uh, usually about forty-five to fifty-five dollars, depend on the bigger butt or not. But I don't want to give mommy a lot of stress, so I think one goat will be enough because you can't be cooking a lot of. Yeah, like a medium size. Of, medium size, and yeah. then that's okay, right? All right, so let's go find somewhere to buy the goat. Let's go goat shopping. <laughs> <laughs> So we finally brought the goat back home and meet my Muslim family. I mean, she's actually my Muslim mom. And she's the one who's gonna do the cooking. I, I'm not gonna cook in here. She's gonna do all the cooking. I mean, since I came to this country, she has been taking care of me, driving me around, and even feeding me. You know, I, I've made it to life. Oh. It's my pleasure to have you. Oh my goodness. Mommy, I wanna say thank you so much. I, I, you know, in, in, in Somaliland, they say Mahasetni. Mahasetni. Yes. In Ghana, we say Medasi. Medasi, okay. Medasi, yeah. I, I, I speak Chinese too, so I'll say Shishieni. <laughs> <laughs> but Mumi, um, I want to know, yeah, why is this so important 
to give during Ramadan? Well, it's, um, it's important here because of the people who in need and the people who have money and uh, wealth. So it's a, it's a kind of balance that the one with the wealth give to the need. It's, yeah. yeah, and I believe that whoever gives never lacks. So mm -hmm. I think this should be a lesson to each and everyone, even if you are not a Muslim, learn to give. But I think um, Ramadan is the time to give. And since I'm here, I also need to give. So I'll just go somewhere else. Yeah. And by the time I come back, I think food will be ready. Will then be ready. together with Samia, or will go out and share the food to the people who sure. actually need it. Sure, sure. All right, Romy. So See you later. How, how many hours do I have to come back? Come back in, in an hour. In an hour? Yeah. In an hour, food will be ready, yeah? So yeah, can I see you somewhere? See you. that i've been waiting for since morning you know it's time to break the fast and uh we break the fast by eating dates and drinking water i mean um it's a way of regaining back your energy sorry i lost that shot because the woman actually explained and yeah after dates and water this follows uh. and watermelon why watermelon because the prophet muhammad was uh, also <laughs> Ate with watermelon. Mm. So, after the dates and water, what next? Then you can start the the uh, sambusa and the and, and the and the mandasi. It's low and it, to break the to break the breakfast. Then after that, you get up and pray. After prayer, you come back for your course, to, your your full meal. Oh, okay. So th this is just like breakfast, right? Breakfast, yes. So breakfast after breakfast, then you come and eat your lunch and dinner. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but mommy, I, I want to say thank you so much for everything. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate. It. I mean, eight days here, you've been amazing. I would love to stay forever, you know. <laughs> yeah, because of you. Now I wanna have a house here. Wow. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, I, I'll be coming here more often. <laughs> Good. Anytime you come, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, but don't forget that we both have a YouTube channel. So make sure you check out the description box. Go click on the link and subscribe. It's by force to support them, yeah? <laughs> um, can I please have my main meal? I'm so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> sure, we have it here. <laughs> Let's get it.